All right, Nate Stad here. I want to give you a little bit of an update on sort of the physical configuration of our machining cell, if you will. This is kind of the macro view, and this is about as far away from it as I can get without running into the wall behind me. But there are a few things to note right off the bat. Um, the first and most major is that now the whole cell, instead of being aligned with instead of being lined with wood, uh, the wood has been covered with a a fairly thick uh, galvanized sheet steel. That gives us um, two things, um, or actually three things. Um, one is it just keeps the solvents and things from soaking into the wood that is underneath. Uh, secondly, it provides a little bit of more durable surface than the wood. And the third is, you notice sort of in that upper right there, um, our cool mist. And the cool, um, the metal is designed to keep the mist from, again, saturating wood or any undesirable things. Uh, unfortunately, the screen just blanked, but I wanted to highlight that. The screen is mounted on the wall in the upper right, and that really provides a nice uh, get it up out of the way kind of thing, and um, provides a nice view from pretty much any angle. Uh, this is the same stand that we had previously, just with the, now with the sheet steel lining. Um, the sheet steel is one continuous piece all the way around, the left, back, and right side. And then the bottom is another piece, and we kind of rain guttered it so the, um, the top piece overlaps the bottom piece and any liquid would run down. But you can also sort of see that white caulk material. That's a urethane caulk, a polyurethane caulk, and it seems to be a good choice in, in this case. Um, we also added a drain. Um, a drain, not so much for the fluids because the fluids volume with the cool mist is pretty low, but provides us a nice, um, a nice way to uh, just push the chips down the hole. And there's a bucket underneath to, to receive those. Uh, the next thing I wanted to highlight is sort of all of these new aluminum covers. Um, we noticed that in just using you know WD-40 or any other um, solvent or uh, any other uh, lubricant, um, it would sort of get everywhere. So to protect the motors and to protect the limit switches and, so, and the wiring connections, um, we implemented these, um, these three covers. The, the box one here on the Y-axis motor, if you just zoom down a little bit, you can kind of see the Y-axis motor tucked under there. It's a fixed, uh, it doesn't move or anything with the axis, but it provides a good cover for the motor, a you know, chip guard and a liquid guard, and it's um, made of a sheet aluminum. The second one is this flat aluminum panel on the Y-axis, and that moves back and forth with the Y-axis uh, to cover up the ball screw and any other things. Those um, accordion rubber covers that came on the mill just kept kind of getting um, bunched up in this particular place. Um, over here on the the x-axis motor, uh, a little bit different configuration, but it's really more just because of the materials we had on hand. Um, a couple of pieces of angle with a, sh a little piece of sheet aluminum between make a nice cover for the x-axis. And again, you, if I zoom down, you can see the connection um, there with that 9-pin um, that D connector is um, spaced on a little aluminum bar kind of to be away from the main work area to keep any uh, liquids or, um, or solvents from getting in there. Um, let's see, what's next? Um, the, the third area where we were a little concerned just with the basic design of the, the CNC conversion was the Z-axis ball screw. It really didn't have any protection at all. So we implemented, actually on the mill itself, the aluminum bracket, if you see, it's kind of a U-shaped bracket. There was a big bolt hole. Um, I can't remember what was in it, to be honest. I think it's an 11 millimeter bolt hole back there to the to the left side of the mill. And this very sturdy, um, this very sturdy bracket made from one inch uh, square aluminum, kind of makes a U down along this way, and U and it's a U-shaped around to the right side. There's no connector here on the right side, but 
the fact the size of that bolt on the left side and the rigidity of the bracket itself make it plenty uh, strong. We went out and bought a little bit wider uh, accordion uh, rubber and attached it with four screws to the bottom of that bracket and then attached it where the old where the old um, manufacturer provided uh, rubber channel uh, rubber um, accordion cover was attached behind the, the y-axis. I can't really get my head back there to show you that but it um, it just attaches to the back of the y-axis and provides both the y-axis cover for the back of the mill and the um, the z-axis ball screw cover. Um, back here hanging up is the cool mist. Um, we have been using that uh, to machine some mild steel and it, it makes a world of difference both in terms of heat and in terms of um, lubrication for the cutting operation. It makes very little uh, liquid. It puts very little liquid out into the environment and um, very little um, you know, dripping and mess. So I think it was a good choice for us here. Um, another addition was just to provide some plumbed in uh, air down here, compressed air. We're both uh, just uh, squirting the mill off and you can see we have that wand uh, for just um, blowing chips and things off of the mill, but also there's a second connection there for the uh, for the cool mist, cool mist with the K. Um, as I said, there's the monitor up there. Let me bump the mouse and it, it'll come back on. Um, that may be it for now. Um, I think I highlighted in previous videos that we we got this um, this pendant. I can't remember the name of the company off the top of my head, but uh, maybe I'll put that in the, in the notes. But it works great. You can click uh, 10 thousandth at a time um, on any axis, and there are many other modes of operation. Well worth the, uh, the small investment. It's connected via USB. Oh, that other little curious box there with the two switches it was meant to be a limit override input. Um, I wi I made the fancy little box with two switches tied in series so that you have to press both switches to activate it. Uh, tied up all the wiring, got it wired in. Seemed to be, um, the input seemed to be working fine. I could see it on the diagnostic screen on uh, Mach 3. However, it turns out we're using the smooth stepper and that particular signal doesn't make it through the smooth stepper. So um, all of these efforts were for naught. Um, it, it turns out that that um, separate electrical input for limit override is not implemented with the USB smooth stepper that we have. So maybe that's about it um, for now. Um, I think we're pretty happy with all of the modifications that we've made to the mill itself and to the milling area. It's time to go out and actually start to create some chips. Thanks. See ya.